Today's lesson is called Inequalities and the Graphs. By the end of today's lesson, you'll be able to recognize all the different types of inequalities and how we're able to graph them. So in your notes, I need a section for equalities and then leave some space in between them and then something labeled inequalities. Now equalities, or equalities is what we've, what we've been doing. It's that equal sign. So we know that it equals is the same as. So I want that in your notes. We know what this equal sign is. Equals is the same as. So 2 is equal to 2. Or 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. This side equals 2. This side equals 2. The same as. Now we're going to deal with something called an inequality instead. Now with inequalities, this symbol means less than. So, for example, which I wanted your notes. And for example, negative 5 is less than 5. This is what that little symbol means, less than. And what I want you to put next to less than, ladies and gentlemen, is when we're graphing, it is going to be a open circle. So why don't you put a little section for, what well, was a bad G, for graph. And I want you to have an open circle, as well as this example in your notes. Then our next symbol is this symbol, which means is greater than. So in your notes, I want another, another example. We're going to have negative 5, sorry, 5 is greater than negative 5. And for your graph section, once again, I want you to put a nice big open circle. So when we're graphing, we'll be using an open circle. So I want this example as well as that op the open circle in your notes. And then our other new symbol is the is less than or equal to. So for example, we have two is less than or equal to to two. This is a true statement. Why? Because 2 is equal to 2. And then another example would be 2 is less than or equal to 4. Why does this work? Because 2 is less than 4. So different ways that it can be true. And then for your graph, you'll be doing it with a closed circle. So I want you to draw one nice big circle. Nice closed circle like that. So I want both these examples as well as a closed circle in your notes. And then our other new symbol is the is less is greater than or equal to. So for example, I have 10 is greater than or equal to 2. And then I also have 10 is greater than or equal to 10. These are both true statements. Why? 10 is greater than 2 and then 10 is equal to 10. So both statements are true and when we're grafting, once again, we're going to have a nice big solid circle. I want you to draw a circle right next to it as well. So I want both examples as well as everything on this graph in your notes. And then our second to last symbol, two little squiggly lines, this means is approximately equal to. So, for example, 299 is approximately equal to what? 3. So approximately. It's kind of like a guess. We're kind of just rounding up. 2.99 is basically equal to 3. So I want this in your notes. And then our last symbol the equal sign with a line slash through it means is not equal to. So for example, 2 is not equal to 4. This symbol we already know, so make sure you have all these different symbols in your notes. So don't write this down, we're just going to be discussing it. So let's go and take a look at example number 1. This is telling us 3 is less than or equal to 2. So the question is though, is this true? 
Is 3 smaller than 2? No. Does 3 equal 2? No. So is this a true statement? No. This is going to be false. So you have to be aware of what the inequality sign means. So now let's going to take a look at example number 2. This one tells me negative 10 is less than, oh, that's supposed to be n, less than or equal to 0. So is negative 10 less than 0? Yes. So this means it can be a true statement. Why? Because 10 is less than 0. Now remember the or. Or is negative 10 equal to 0? No. But since part of it is true, this equation is true. I'm going to put true right there. Now in your table groups, discuss what's the answer to 3 and 4. If you're working at them home, you should have gotten true for both of them. Now in your notes, I need the directions, number 1, as well as this graph in your notes. So what this is telling me is x is less than, well it's supposed to be less than, or equal to 2. So what does that mean? That means x is less than, so it has to be smaller. What number is smaller than 2? Well, 1 smaller than 2, 0 smaller than 2, negative 1 smaller than 2. Or it could also be equal to 2, so 2 is also going to be a possible answer. So watch and see how this graph is going to look. So we decide that 1 is a possible answer, 0 is a possible answer. We also have 2 as a possible answer, negative 1, 2, a whole bunch of different type of possible answers. Now we're not sure what x is going to equal, but it can be anything smaller than 2. So I could have 1 and a half, 1 and 3 fourths, 1 and a whole bunch of different values. Now, if you noticed, remember I told you earlier with graphing, I have a less than or equal to sign. So when I'm graphing, it's going to be a solid dot. Now why is it a solid dot? Because 2 is a possible answer. Remember, it's an or. It's either less or equal. So 2 is a possible answer. That's why it's a solid dot, and that's where we're going in the negative direction. Why? Because x has to be smaller than 2. So be careful when it comes to graphing, whether or not you have a solid dot or if you're going to have a open dot. So let's go and write down example number 2. So the example number 2, this is telling us is x is greater than 3. If x is greater than 3, that means it's bigger than 3. So 2 is a possible, oh sorry, greater, bigger. So let's see. 4 is a possible answer, 5 a possible answer, but is 3 a possible answer? The answer is no. Why? Because it has to be greater than 3. Every number has to be bigger than 3. So we're looking at 3.1 or 3.2, but never 3 as a possible answer. So watch and see how this graph is going to look. So, negative, oh, oh we're doing a negative 3, sorry. So all different possibilities, negative 2, negative 1, 0, all the different greater values. So we can pick all these different values. Now, if you take a look, remember when it came to graphing. So I told you whenever there's inequality sign like that, it's going to be an open circle. Why? Because negative 3 is not a possible answer. We can get every value super close to negative 3, but negative 3 is not an actual possible answer. That's why it's an open circle, because all these are possible answers, but negative 3 is not a possible answer. So make sure you have this in your notes, not a possible answer. That's why we have an open circle. And I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I lost my negative earlier. I shouldn't have lost it. Now in your notes, I need the directions as well as example number 1. Now, example number 1 is telling us that we're looking for all real numbers less than or equal to 3. Now how can I rewrite that? I can rewrite that as a less than or equal to sign. Now all real numbers, do I know what these numbers are? I don't, so let's use a variable to represent what they look like. So all real numbers, let's call them x less than or equal to 3 and I've written uh, my inequality. Now, go and write down number 2 and try to solve it on your own. So, let's see what it's telling us. We have all real numbers, we'll call that x, greater than, has to be bigger 
then negative 2. Now remember, there's no or equal to, so this right here should not be there. All it's telling us is that it's greater than. Since it's greater than, this will be your answer. So go write down example number three. So in this case, we have a number x is at least two. So is at least, what does that mean? Is that mean it's going to be x is two, it's going to be x is greater than two, or x is less than two, x is greater than or equal to, or x is less than or equal to. So at least two. So what does that mean? That means x has to be has to be at least 2, so x better equal to. But does that mean can x be bigger than 2 or smaller than 2? If it's at least 2, that means our possibility is probably that x can also be greater than 2. So how do we combine those two symbols into one symbol? x is greater than or equal to 2, at least 2. And then, how is this going to look on a graph? Now remember, 2, since x is equal to 2, 2 is a possible answer, so we better have a solid dot, x has to be greater than 2, so we'll be moving in the direction of all the bigger numbers. So that's how we're going to be graphing it. So I have my solid dot and I draw my arrow. Now, go and try to work on number 4 on your own. So, number 4 is telling us we have some number y is less than, smaller than, negative 2. Now there's no or equal to or at least 2. So, We've set up our inequality. Now the next step, though, is how to graph it. Now remember, y is smaller than negative 2. y does not equal negative 2. So at negative 2, you better have an open circle. Now y is smaller. Smaller numbers would go in this direction, so be careful of what direction you need to go. So we draw our open circle. We, and, oops. And, sorry ladies and gentlemen, I lost my arrow. And don't forget to draw your arrow. We're going to the smaller direction. Now don't write these down. We're going to work them out together. So everyone go and take a look at example number one. Now, I have an open dot, an open circle. So that means it's going to either going to be a less than or equal to sign. Those are my two options. So we're going to have to use the variable. So I choose x to, to describe all my different value choices. Now, I'm looking at my values, I'm going in the negative direction, the smaller direction. So all my possible values of x should be less than, smaller than what? 2. Our circle's telling us where we're starting from. So remember, if it's an open circle, these inequalities are my two different choices. Now, go and try to solve number 2 and number 3 in your groups. Now number 2, once again, we'll use x as our variable. Now, since it's a closed dot, are less than or equal to or greater than or equal to sign. And if you notice, all my values of x are increasing, get, getting bigger. So that means x is greater than or equal to what value? Negative 1. Now it's going to take a look at 3. Once again, open circle. So we have a greater than or less than sign. This is our x. All our values are getting bigger. So x then is greater than negative 9. And last but not least, let's go and work out 14 together real quickly. Once again, closed circle. That means it's a less than or equal to, greater than or equal to sign, because 15 is part of our answer. All our values are getting bigger, so that means x has to be greater than or equal to 15. Now don't write down this giant paragraph. Let's read this together. So we need to write an inequality that's going to describe this situation. So we have a student pays for three movie tickets with a $20 bill and he gets some change back. We're going to let T represent the cost of the movie ticket. So let's see what we got. So he bought three movie tickets, right? So we know we have three T. He used a $20 bill, so we have 20 some here, somewhere around there, but then we also got some change back. So we have to figure out how to write this inequality. Now, since we got change back, we know that we can't be using our less than or equal to or greater than or equal to signs. Why? Because since we got change back, we know that this is not going to equal 20. That's not the correct way. So we can't use any of these equal signs. So our two options are either going to be 
3t is greater than 20 or 3t is less than 20. So, we end up using our $20 bill. And if we got change back, should my tickets cost more than 20? So should it be 3t is greater than 20? Or should it be 3t is less than 20? Now, since we got change back, that means 3t is less than 20. Because let's say our tickets end up costing $17. If we subtract 17, we end up getting 3. That means it's less than. So that's why 3t is less than 20. Now don't write this down. Now, with equations. We have our x plus 3 is equal to 5. Now normally, when we solve this mentally, what value plus 3 will give me 5? It's going to be 2. Then, for inequalities, what value of x will make this true? Remember, our whole, goal, our whole goal is to make it true. So, if we want to make it true, any real number greater than 2, right? Because 2 plus 3 is 5, or actually greater than 2, sorry, 3 plus 3. So if I get any value greater than 2. So if I did 3 plus 3, it's greater than 5. Or 10 plus 3, greater than 5. Any real number greater than 2 has the value to be bigger than 2. Now, how do we solve these using transformations? Remember, we do PEMDAS backwards. So I can subtract 3 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 2. With inequalities, our same rules apply. I'm going to subtract 3 on both sides, and I will get x is greater than 2. So, for example, let's take this equation. You're like, well, how does that work? So let's say I'm going to let x equal to 6. Now 6 plus 3, is this greater than 5? Yes it is. Then, since I already let x is equal to 6, is 6 greater than 2? Yes it is. So the whole point with our inequalities, ladies and gentlemen, is that we want to keep them true. Not necessarily balanced, but true. So the same rules apply. Whatever I do to one side, I must do the other, and I will still have a true equation. So in your notes, I want a two-sentence summary. What did you learn about inequalities? And what did you learn about how to graph an inequality when you have an open circle, when you have a closed circle?